In this video, I'm going to show you how to model different types of knurling profiles. But before we go ahead and start modeling, let's take a look at the different types there are. Now, keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list. It's just a couple of examples that you will encounter when dealing with everyday objects. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different types. So the first type is the diamond pattern, and that basically is just this crisscrossing like so with the diamond pattern. And the second one is the straight one, which is very simple to model. And the third one is the twist or the diagonal. And this goes from either left to right or right to left. Like so. And the straight one is pretty simple. So these are the different types that you'll encounter when dealing with everyday objects. So now that we know that the different types, let's also take a look at the dif different frequencies. All right, so the first one you will have is coarse. And that's just going to be spread quite far apart from each other. The next one would be medium. And this would be organized a little closer to each other, like so. And then you have the fine pattern, which is bunched up and very close to each other, like so. So now that we know the different types of the different frequencies, let's go on ahead and start modeling. So I'll just go ahead and clear everything that I have here. And let's get started with modeling. So I'm going to start off with a cylinder. And let's make sure I'm out of that annotate tool there. And let's just change the mat cap. And now we can start modeling. So this is the default cylinder. It has about 32 edges. And I'm just going to add a loop there and give it about four cuts like so. Once I do that, I'll go ahead and switch to face mode and hold down A and say select all. That's going to deselect everything. And then when I do that, once again, it's going to go ahead and select everything that there is. And I'll just say poke face. And that's going to add diagonals to every face that there is. And the reason I added a few cuts in the horizontal plane is so that the long axis. Let's just select the annotate tool once again there. Just make sure I'm off the tool. The reason I added fewer number of cuts on the horizontal plane is so that I have a long axis and a short axis when I'm going to model that diamond pattern. So let's go ahead now and clear this all off and continue with the modeling process. So once I've done this, I'm just going to go ahead and select this edge right here and this one right here, and I'll hold down Shift G and say similar length. Now that's going to go ahead and select all the edges that are running vertically as well as horizontally, and it's going to exclude the diagonals. But I don't want to delete all of them, so what I'm going to do is just select the boundary loops like so, and then dissolve the rest of them. So I've retained the boundary loops here, but gone ahead and deleted the rest of the edge loops. So now what I'm going to do is select all again, make sure that I'm in face mode and hit poke. And once I've poked all the faces, I'm going to increase the poke offset to a value of 0 0.05. That's going to push all the vertices out. Now I don't want this to be applied to the cap here. So I'm going to undo and redo that. So just go ahead and deselect the caps and repeat that process once again. And let's go ahead to our 
object data properties and just check auto smooth and we'll get a value of about 20 and let's go ahead and shade smooth so that's how you go about modeling this specific knowing profile so now that we are done with this let's go ahead and also add some variation so let's go ahead and select the vert right here and i'll hold down shift g and say select by amount of adjacent faces and i'll bevel the vertices by hitting Control shift b and also flattening it all and there you go so now that we've done with this let's go ahead and push this off to the side like so and let's grab ourselves another cylinder and let's take a look at how to model the straight knurling pattern so again default cylinder with 32 edges i'm just going to subdivide like so let's just get rid of this edge right in the middle and let's select the edge that's on the flat surface of this face and let's select the other edge right here so all these edges that i'm selecting are on the flat part of the face and i'm just going to select every other by holding Control shift and plus on my keyboard that's going to go ahead and select everything there and now i'm going to scale this out but i'm going to exclude the z axis so what i'm going to do is hit shift and z on the keyboard to exclude that and i'm going to accept this so once i do that let me go ahead and add a little bit more interest to this um, straight knurling pattern so what i'm going to do is just add a cut here and i'll just bevel it like so and I'm going to take every other vertice here and I'm going to snap two vertices and make sure that I have auto merge selected. I'll just go ahead and slap it on like that. So now what I'll do is I'll connect all these loops right here and I'll just time lapse this portion. So now that we've gone ahead and connected all those edges, let's just cut this in half like so and we'll just mirror the rest of it. Make sure we select that, just mirror it in the correct axis. And that's how you go about modeling this straight knurling profile. So now that we've done with this, let's go ahead and just push this off to the side as well, like so. Now let's create a, another cylinder. So let's go ahead and do that. And what we'll do is add some loops to it. Do it about four cuts. And then we'll select the entire thing and make sure that we isolate it. And we can poke face. This time we may want to make sure that poke offset is zero. Let's exclude the caps. I mean, let's select the edges first. Then let's get rid of the um, horizontal ones as well as the vertical ones, except for the boundaries. Make sure we end up with something like this. And now what we're going to do is, first and foremost, I'm going to just um, get rid of these this fan right here. So the triangle fan, just get rid of that by dissolving the edges. It's not an important step, but uh, yeah, I wanted to get rid of that. So now what I'm gonna do is just work on one section here. So just get rid of the rest of the cylinder. I'm not gonna need that. Just make sure that I select everything properly. So now what I'm going to do is select every other edge. So select every other edge and connect it to the bottom by 
selecting the shortest path. I'm just going to go ahead and select everything around like so, which is a bit tedious. I'm sure there's a much faster way of doing this. All right, so once I've gone ahead and selected all the every alternating edge, I'm going to scale and exclude the Z axis like I did the last time. And that's how you get this kind of twisting or diagonal knurling. And what I'm going to do is just hit auto smooth and shade smooth. And that's going to get rid of that ugly tessellation that we had in between. And we can also make this a bit interesting by selecting the vert here and just combining it with the one below. So make sure that we activate snap by hitting shift and tab on the keyboard and then just hitting G on the keyboard to move that vert. We're going to just snap it there. Let's repeat that. And I'm just going to do this for the whole thing like so. And I'm just going to time lapse this part out. So once I've gone ahead and done that, what I'm going to do is repeat the same process that I did with the straight knurling profile and just connect all the vertices like so. And voila, we're done with that portion. And I'll repeat the same process at the bottom as well. And I will be right back. So that brings us to the end of this video. The principle discussed here should equip you to model any type of knurling that you come across. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.